Ok, doctor Manuel Arias, we can start whenever you want. Ok, thank you. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, welcome to the mechanical engineering session of the International Conference on Electrical Engineering, Com Computing Science and Automatic Control. The first uh, presentation is entitled Influence of MMT Reinforcement Fraction Variation of the Mechanical Properties of a Polycarbonate Polymer Matrix with an ABEs Additive. Uh, the speaker has around 15 minutes for the presentation, and after that, a uh, session of uh, question and answers will be carried out. Uh, so, uh, please, you can you uh, start with the presentation? Good afternoon. Thank you, sir. Of course. Right now. I wonder if you can see my screen. Not currently. Uh, are you using a Mac? Uh, okay, now. Can you see the screen? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to share the screen. Okay. Okay. You got it? Now it's visible. Okay, perfect. Okay. Again, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Carlos Sanchez, and we all the authors are from Colombia. We are representing the University of Francisco de Paulo Santander Ocaña, and I have the pleasure to present to you this research entitled Influence of MMT Reinforcement Fraction Variation on the Mechanical Properties of a Polycarbonate Polymer Matrix with an ABS Additive. Here, um, is the outline of the introduction, methodology, results, conclusions, future work, and the reference that were the base of, the of this research. Here with introduction, Joe, so let us begin. Here, we have the composite materials. We know the composite materials are widely used in industries such as uh, automotive, mar marine, aeronautical, or special, and in this sense, of course, it's widely studied by universities and companies looking for improved the mechanical properties and to know how the heat interacts with these kind of composites. In this case, this matrix here is polycarbonate. The reinforcement is the clay, in this case, the MMG, and the additive is the ABS. And the main question here is what mechanical and thermomechanical properties of polycarbonate can be improved? by mixing it with ABS and different fraction of murmuronic clay. Here is the research reference, a quite important part of this research. And in the Federal University of South Carlos, Rafael Grande et al. in 2017, studied the effects of nanoclay addition on phase morphology and the stability of the polycarbonate styrene aculonitrate blends. They found that with this mixture, a reduction of the interfacial tension between the components and a better morphological stability were achieved due to the use of organoclays with non-polar organic modifiers. Then, the Institute of Polymer Research, Helmut Serum Getnach in Germany, Lin et al. in 2011, studied the morphology and the and mechanical properties of biphenyl A, polycarbonate, polystyrene, quaternitrile blends, based clay nanocomposites. They found that the mechanical properties of the nanocomposites obtained vary depending on the amount of reinforcement tensile strength increased by maximum of 41% when 5% by weight of clay is used. While the formation decreases, does it clearly, and on the other hand, the impact strength can be improved up to this value here. It's quite bigger compared to the pure mixture when 1% by weight of clay is used. It's, uh, it's an important fact here. And the State Key Laboratory of Fire Science, University of Science and Technology of China, one is on 2003, is studied the synthesis and characterization of polycarbonate ABS monmeronate nanocomposites. They found that the, these nanocomposites have better thermal stability than that PC ABS polymer alloy matrix. Given the above, this research was developed by means of an experimental correlational methodology where the independent variable 
is the chemical composition of the material bearing the percentage by weight of reinforcement between one and five percent. The dependent variables are the mechanical and thermomechanical properties evaluated. Here is the methodology. Here we have the general structure was divided in four important stage. In this case, the first one, the raw material preparation is divided in two stage to the granulometrical analysis, then the material processing in three stage, mixing, extrusion, injection, and then of course the sample testing to find the mechanical properties and the thermomechanical properties, and finally of course the analysis of the results. Here is with the materials. As I said, the procedure of the granulometric analysis of the MMT was mainly carried out in two stages. We have the grinding and the shaving. The machines used here and the materials here, you can see the reference of the PCs, the polycarbonates, with the ABS natural, here's the acrylonitrile butadiene student, and the clay is a monmerionite that was obtained from the mineralogy laboratory of the university in Antioquia, Nigeria, Colombia. And the clay underwent a pre and a post crushing granulometric analysis process to verify that its particle size was adequate to be mixed with the metrics. Of course, all these process were carried out with the ASTM International. That's it. Here we have the sheaving. In this stage, the sheave is used in this work. It has the equipment. And of course, and with an opening of uh, 75 mic micrometers under the ASTM. E. Elven in standard. The average particle size was obtained after the sheaving process was this value here. Then, uh, with the grinding, this part of the, of the process was carried out with this machine, in this case, the mill, with the purpose of reducing the particle size of the clay and obtaining a better dispersion of the clay in the matrix. The average particle size was obtained after the milling process was this value. You know, you can see this, this, this lower. It changed it. It's quite important here for this mixture. Then here in the mixing, we have the first stage, the reinforcement addition percentage of one, uh, of zero percent, two, five percent of monomer clay, and a seven over three weight, weight radio of polycarbonate and ABS were considered. You can see here in the, in the figure, you can see the machine, and here you can see the pellet. That's quite important part of the mixture. Then we have the extrusion. This is the equipment, it's the machine, it's the extruder, this everlast. And to determine the extrusion parameters, the temperature profiles change as a function of the percentage of reinforcement. This range from zero to two percent had a constant profile. Due to probability and the degradation, temperature of the materials can make up the composite material, even the above between three and five percent, increase it, the temperature profile. At this point in the process, pellets were obtained to be used in the injector. That is the, the, the next step. Here you can see the injection. This is the machine. An injector was used to obtain the specimen for tensile, sharp impact, HDT, and robot hardness test. Of course, under this standardization, ASTM, you can see in the pictures. Here is the sample for tensile uh, testing to the impact, Sharpie, and the HDT. Then we have the thermomechanical testing. Here is the samples testing. Uh, of course, a, this is the HTTP. This is the norm you can see here. And then we have the mechanical testing. For this mechanical evaluation, of course, this is the day on the reference of a machine usage to evaluate tensile strength, sharp impacts, the hardness, and the HDT. And of course, all the norms, all the standards reflexively that we use it. Then we have the results here, the mechanical properties of tensile testing. In this process, uh, we perform it in triplicate for each chemical composition. You can see here in the picture, here is the sample broken with the machine. It's clear and it is, it's, a good, it's a good picture here and that describes in effect the behavior. And here is the table. We have the composition in function of the model of elasticity and the yield strength, of course, bearing the percentage of the AMT from 1% to 5%. And we have, we can see the highest values is with the 3% of addition here. And the 5%, of course, these are the two highest values. 
Here we have the mechanical properties in the in intensive testing. It's possible to identify that I behavior similar to the to that observed with the maximum stress is presented where the composition with three percent reinforcement had the maximum value in its elastic modulus. However, the polycarbonate without any any tip has a value very close to that of the of the lead composition. This may be true that the absence of plasticity, we know that's quite important, and causing the material to have a brittle behavior, which is even initiated by a high elastic modulus. Then with the sharp impact, we have the, the chart here. According to the results, the impact resistance of the three and 5% composition increases 27.5% and 33.7% respectively, compared to the material without any reinforcement. The bar chart represents the proportional increase in absorbed energy as a function of material composition. The impact resistance increase as a function of the clay content, since the latter has a large amount of organic component, which makes it more compatible with the matrix and the energy received can be better dispersed. That's an important lesson here, <laughs> isn't it? And here we have the HRB. This is the road with hardness. You can see in the graph in the chart. This is an increase of, of up to 44% and the hardness values with respect to the unreinforced material is observed. This is due to the fact that the clay is a raw material associated with ceramic materials. And we know that they are characterized by their relative high hardness. It's a quite characteristic of the, of the ceramic uh, materials. Here we have the HDT heat deflection temperature. And here's quite important to know how the heat interacts with the material, in this case, with the composites. Here is a proportional increase of the heat deflection temperature as a function of the material composition. In this test, it's clear that the clay improve the thermal stability of the polycarbonate ABS clay composite, which has been verified in previous studies by thermogravimetric analysis, the TGA. Then we have the HDT again. The heat deflection temperature of the composite on reinforcement with 5% clay is 17% higher than of their own reinforced polycarbonate, which represents a great advantage for a thermoplastic material since they are very sensitive to temperature changes. Finally, the mechanical and the mechanical tests were effective in establishing the advantage of this new material. That's quite important. And here is a summary. Here is the final analysis. We have the all, we have the composition in function of all the tests that we perform. Here you can see the hardness, the HDT, the sharing pack, the seal, and the highest values are here in the in the three person and five person. And of course, with all the ASTM's norms. And here, conclusion of future work. We have the one two phases of the research project were complete. The following conclusions were reached. Here, by adding clay as a reinforced material to the composite, the thermal properties of the polycarbonate and ABS in, were improved. Since at the time of extruding and injecting the material, the degradation temperature of both polymeric materials were accepted. Therefore, the deflation temperature and the toughness of the composite material increases. As a function of clay, con of clay reinforcement content, the content of organic matter in the clay makes it more compatible with the matrix and therefore favors the dispersion of the energy received in the impact. That's the principle. Also, the composite managed to improve the tensile strength, obtaining the highest value in the material in forms with 3% clay, as shown in the charts and graphs before. Here in a few words, it's evident that the new material design that exceeds the limits of the resistance or to hardness, traditional distortion temperature of commercial polymeric materials such as polyamide 6, PA6, polyamide 66, polyether ketone, polypropylene, polypropylene PP, and polyamide 612, and polyoxymethylene. Then a few words is, is oriented to perform the same EDX test to determine the homogeneity of the composite material in order to verify the dispersion of clay in the material and the internal porosities. You know, that's quite important to do the zoom here. 
And finally, this represents an innovation for the development of elements such as gears, ball bearings, clip, nozzle, flanges, polymer chase, among others. In addition, it's an alternative to reduce the environmental impact without reducing its purpose. Here, the reference in a big part, of course. And here is our contact. If you have any question that maybe I can answer now, you can send us an email. Você pode falar português em inglês, se você quiser, em espanhol. Estaremos aqui presentes. Muito obrigado, thank you. E estou muito atento por any recommendation of question that you can have. Thank you very much for, for your interesting presentation. Uh, any question? For questions, you can raise your hand to you open your hand. Or you can send us an email. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Carlos, uh, I, I have a question. Okay, perfect. Uh, uh, do you, do you, uh, do uh, did you do some uh, quantification about, uh, for example, percentage of elongation of the material? Uh, that is, uh, is there any any study to to try to quantify to quantify the ductility of the material? Yeah, of course. That's it. You can see here, here is an important fact. Uh, it's, you know, that the, the principle of the resistance of materials are associated with this, with this figure here, you can see. Normally it's with the tensiles testing, you can see here with the values and of course in the article, in the paper, you can see this um, more compact, of course, important to quantify all the, values that we can obtain in age testing. Yet, and I, and I, in effect, with a 3% is the highest values of resistance in tensile testing, HDT, and the hardness, and of course, the charge impact. The 3% represent us a big hope to improve the material in other applications, as I said before here, you can see. If, if we have the, the, the best values, we can apply this to the through the gears, the ball bearings, the clip, the nozzles. That's it. That's an alternative to to improve this industry. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Uh, any more? Carlos, I have one question. Perfect. I, I'm, impressed, I'm impressed of mixing uh, clay with polycarbonates and ABS materials, but uh, how much clay can you add to the uh, to the to this kind of polymers? Because okay. um, uh, I, I think uh, you have an, an important effect on the fragility of the material. So yeah. what can you say about that? Okay, perfect. You know that's that's we use the clay because it's in, including I. Here you can see this is quite important because the because the the clay is important because it's associated with the ceramic materials. Yeah, it's a risk because mm -hmm. it it increases our risk about the about about this kind of failures. In this sense, uh, it's quite important to have the balance. You know that to have yes. the balance in this case is not 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 more than five percent or maybe six percent because in this case is not recommendable you know that we use it all the author they studied this before as we show in the first presentations you know that we can accept the limit of the clay because you know that there's a risk about the failure it helped us if we use this in the range, you know, that's between yeah. the zero percent or the five percent of, of the clay addition. If we maybe accept this limit, we can get 
the the wrong values you know that's the, to maintain the the balance that yeah? is the balance to yes. get in a best in a best shape in the best properties that's it is it possible that 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 because of the clay has uh, uh, different thermomechanical properties than the polycarbonates and abs it it helps us of course Uh, including with the HDT, here is the uh, heat deflation temperature. The clay, <laughs> yeah. the clay has up because we know that the clay is associated, as I told before, with the ceramic yes. materials. So it's associated with the resistance of the heat and the hardness. But in the same thing, if we accept the clay, It's example. We use the clay as a as a five percent. It's perfect. With a five percent, we yeah. get the best. We got the best hardness, and or the best sharp impact, and yes. we have the best sharp impact, a good heat, that's the a good HDT. But if we accept the five percent, maybe we don't have good properties in the impact, but we could have better in the HDT. You know that for have the two option to have the two properties is quite important to maintain the balance. If we accept, okay, we gain the HDT, but we failure with the impact resistance. This is the, you know, I told you to keep the balance. <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Carlos. Thank you, thank you, of course. You can, and if you want more information, you could you could contact us. We're going to be quite happy to share with you the information and maybe a study <laughs> later. Yes, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. And uh, uh, the next uh, presentation is ready. Yes. Can you see my screen? Um, yes. No, yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, next uh, presentation is entitled "Parametric Identification of a Magnetorological Damper Based on Genetic uh, Algorithm." So, uh, again, uh, you have around 15 minutes for your presentation, and after that, the session of uh, answer uh, question and answers. Okay. Okay, hi everyone, all friends. My name is Andre Jose Rodriguez Torres, a doctoral candidate in the Automatic Control Department of Simvestap uh, in Mexico City. This board was made by my advisor, Dr. Jesus Morales Valdez, and my co-advisor, uh, Dr. Gwen Yu. Uh, our paper is titled Parametric Identification of Magnetological Damper Based on Genetic Algorithm. Uh, basically, this paper presents a, an identification system for model parameter of a magnetological damper through a genetic algorithm. Uh, first, a novel model of the stereotype Phenomena is introduced throughout uh, the trigonometric function hyperbolic tangent, uh, which represents an advantage, an alternative or simple model for the for the damper. Okay, uh, the remainder of the presentation of this work uh, is organized as follows. I First, I want to introduce a little motivation to the use of meteorological damper, a session magnetological a mathematical model, describes the dynamic dynamic model of the magnetological damper, the development of the nonlinear identification with genetic algorithms detailed in the session parametric identification methodology. Uh, whereas some results are given in session results. And finally, concluding remarks are provided in session conclusion. 
Okay, the use of the magnetological damper. Uh, first, I want to introduce who is magnetological damper. The magnetological damper are semi-active control device that have a recent guided much attention for vibration control applications due to their quick response and because the stern energy required for them to operate is smaller than active control systems. Uh, additionally, we can find this actuator in some application like uh, re reduced vibration uh, in the helicopter fuselage generated by the main rotor, uh, produce an increasing charge of life in, in the industry of vibration, shock, and motion, and noise control problem are fat of the life in the design and operation of many types of the process of equipment to date. This damper can help you solve such problems with uh, a and of anti vibration mounts. Uh, for example, adaptive suspension systems uh, continuous after their suspension set setting seen real time to switch different driving of road surface condition, providing an improved dynamic stability. In cyber structures, isolation reduction of airquake uh, induced vibration and save life. However, the use of these kinds of damper for control has a significant drawbacks due to the characterization of nonlinear and iterative uh, for displacement response produced by it, uh, magnetrologic fluids. Okay. To characterize the behavior of this type of dampers, we use a simple model proposed by Wok. As I showed in the figure, uh, the model used a uh, hyperbolic tangent function to show the statistical response. Additional function are represents to represent the stiffness and viscosity of the damper. In consequence, the model can be expressed as is shown in equation one. The force. The force is a, a sum of viscosity plus the stiffness. Uh, Z factor Z is a theoretical, theoretical state given by hyperbolic tangent uh, function times as uh, factor scale alpha and F zero is a is a, a offset of the force. Like we can see the, the, that in the figure, uh, the same figure represents the effect of scalar force delta, uh, and the scene of the displacement which determines the width of the theoretical loop. A broad theoretical phenomenon corresponds a large value of delta. Uh, for this usage, uh, this model will be used for nonlinear parametric identification purpose. However, uh, this model lacks a term associated with voltage to modify to modify the damper force required. It should be not the difficult to identify the parameters, the, the number of the factor to be identified. Despite being less than other models, such as the well known Baldwin, and other challenges are signal not available, measurement noise, for example. Okay, uh, to achieve the nonlinear parameter identification, we use, we use a genetic algorithm, which is a Searching an optimization uh, technique based on the principle of the genetics and natural selection, 
as with any optimization algorithm, the genetic algorithm is dated with reducing the estimation error uh, between experimental data and uh, the estimate or genetic algorithm test output through a uh, finesse function. The secret of this type is the finesse fusion. The finesse fusion. The type can, can be seen in the in the figure. Initial values, calculate the model, finesse function. And, uh, we get uh, a new set of values by recombination, mut mutation, or replacement uh, from the system of of condition of the finesse fusion segment. Uh, some uh, advantage of this type the algorithm is is the is the simplest way to computational implementation uh, this not don't require uh prior information from the system nor using filters signs of voice in singularities for limits or they are discontinuous function for example and some limitation of this method is uh, regarding the selection of the initial value for selection of, of the individuals in a population, the percentage of application of the rule, and a good choice of finesse function. The, the new set of value are determined by some rules. The rules are shown in the figure. These rules are selection, uh, the chromosome that give good results in the cost function or fitness function is key to the next generation uh, of a new population. Uh, uh, another rule is crossing South Spar from one chromosome is one at, on another chromosome. Uh, ordering, change the order of the chromosomes a mutation involves uh, a lily of randomly gene. These really are carried out depending on pre establishing percentage in the chain and or evolution, evolution of, of the fitness function. In this way, the, the genetic algorithm works. Uh, some birth simulation, this, this session presents the simulation of previous model with parameters identified by Yardy and are presented in the table table one he, uh, as input of the model a sinusoidal a sinusoidal displacement with frequency of 3.6 hertz and amplitude of 25 millimeters according to IW dumping test machine by Lundit from Spain and estimation of the velocity the figure sits is showing the curve the, of the force against this flaming in simulation. Uh, for experimental validation, the mathematical model and, and the strategy of the genetic algorithm of uh, nonlinear parametric parametric identification, we use a uh, universal universal tensor compression testing machine controlled by a computer with a sample period of 50 milliseconds, as I can show in the figure, uh, a voltage source, a current meter, uh, the magnetological damper was, was subjected to, to Three displacement tests on the previous on the on the previous on the previous test machine uh, mentioned it, describe it e with three different constant voltage. Uh, additionally, the 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 force data were filtered, while the velocity was estimated through the filters, as is shown in the equation two. With a coup of frequency in 5 Hz, according to the Fourier transform of the of the data. The, the finite fusion used in genetic 
algorithm is defining for the estimation error between experimental and simulation results. Defining as equation three, it releases a, a mean of the difference of the all data. Uh, where the simulation data is obtained by what model uh, with viscosity, stiffness, and other coefficients as design variables. The lower and upper limits are described in the table together with the estimation of the of the parameters throughout uh, Evolutur from Paladise, uh, which is a additional Excel package. You can download and install as extra package. OK, a total of number of 24,600 valid tests, the proper of 10,000 tests, a maximum percentage or, or chain of 0 0.01, and the best result with the minimum value of the finite function can be seen in the figure. Okay. Okay. To see the in a very well the results, the, the figure shows the comparison between experimental and simulate response with uh, 5.4 volts on the magnetological damper. Uh, we can see the hyperbolic uh, tangent function as uh, represent the, the, the hysterical phenomena. Uh, from the obtained result, it's clear that estimate response uh, is close to the experimental values, obtaining a reasonable parameter estimation. Um, moreover, a comparison between predictor response and the corresponding experimental data is providing figure 10. Uh, this data is with is, is displayment test with 3.9 volts on the damper. Uh, in this way, we can we can see the the robustness of the parameter identification from magnetological damper throughout a genetic algorithm is verified. Okay. Some conclusion of the of this work, we achieve a model of the magnetological alpha is being introduced to characterize the experimental response. Uh, a genetic algorithm was used to develop a non-linear identification method, which showed in a very good performance. The magnetological damper characterization for simple model based on trigonometric functions has been achieved. Uh, this represents a great advantage to design a semi-active vibration control law. Okay, by to your attention. Thank you. If you have any question of the the word, can you say me now? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Andres. Andres. Uh, the session chair uh, is out because, because of his internet. internet. So, so uh, uh, is no, don't worry. Is there any question there? from the attendants. Please, you can raise your hand and turn on your microphone. I have some questions, um, Andres. So uh, in this figure, uh, I, I was wondering about uh, what is the reason of the uh, non-smooth uh, response there on the red line, because uh, the hyperbolic behavior, uh, the hysteretic behavior. So, what is the reason of this of these changes at the oh, middle? Okay. Uh, the the at zero forces. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. The this 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 figure represents the displacement against the force. Uh, okay. 
in this moment well, don't I don't I don't I don't show the figure the velocity with with force. Yes. In, in the velocity with force, we can see the 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 the, the figure of hyperbolic tangent function. Okay, this is the reason because uh, the, the the line is 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 this type of of behavior. Yes, mm -hmm. and and what was the reason to adopt this this kind of model, uh, this trigonometric model, instead of the uh, of to my knowledge, the the best model is by Spencer is. Okay. So, uh, this is a non-smooth model, uh, hysteretic, uh, non, uh, etc. Mm -hmm. And but it, it is the more complete. Of course, it's very difficult the mathematical model. Okay. Uh, the main reason is the non-linear identification. Uh, we we have six parameters for this model. Yes. C, C, K, Alpha. F zero, and in the Spencer in the Spencer model half I don't remember twelve. I don't remember right now fifty twelve. No, I don't remember the number the number of the parameter. This Nine is and sixteen parameters. Yeah. Okay, this is the main the main reason okay. of of our selection in, in of this model. I in the in the future world uh, we we pretend in uh, use the voltage the voltage modify this this parameter c that represent the the steam, the if the final hysteresis yes mm -hmm. and is there any other question from the audience no I have another question, and what what is the influence? Uh, because you you are modeling uh, your parameters, uh, or your parameters are are in terms of the voltage. So, but uh, the is, rheological properties are more sensitive to current. So, uh, is there some constant between the current and the voltage? Yeah, yeah. I mean, in this moment, I I, I am we are working on that. Uh, okay. We are we are we are uh, we are testing different types of model. This is yeah. a fierce approximation of, of, of our our work. But uh, I want uh, I I my 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 final propose is yeah. uh, vibration culture in civil structures. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. And, and in this moment, I, I only only at least study this this. Okay, I, I study a lot of, of types, but uh, recently we have more models with current than than voltage. Okay, thank you very much, Andres. Yeah, and it's welcome. time to to switch to the next presentation. So thank, thank you, you again. Thank you. So now is. Is uh, so the next uh, presenter for this next paper is soft computing tools for multi objective optimization of offshore crude oil and gas operation plant for the best operational condition. So, uh, who will present this paper? Is the presenter the next Jose, paper? Jose Hugo, are you presenting or is Rasik Tarik? Yes, it's the present. Okay. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, Jose Hugo will be presenting the article. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, Jose Hugo, can you switch your, uh, your presentation? Okay. Can you push the, the the square button just besides the microphone? You have to share your screen. Okay, we'll see. So okay, go ahead, uh, Jose Hugo. Okay. 
Uh, good afternoon to everyone present. Uh, my name is Jose Hugo Mendoza Ruiz. I study a master degree in materials and energy engineering at the Universidad del Carmen. Uh, I come to introduce you the topic um, soft computing tools for multi objective optimization of short good oil and gas separation plan for the best operational condition. Um, I come, this presentation is arranged as follows introduction, system description, methodology, and result and discussion, and conclusion and reference. Uh -huh. And the process diagram uh, shows a typical installation uh, for the processing of crude oil and gas. And uh, crude uh, is stabilization, stabilization to be pumped on shore um, facility. And gas is compressed and sent to onshore states. And um, the objective uh, of this work too is, is to find and the set of the optimal uh, operating variables that maximize oil production in offshore facility, which brings um, both economic and environmental benefits. Uh, the analyze uh, system has two uh, subsystems, oil stabilization and gas compression. And crude compression, uh, crude, crude stabilization. Uh, the process is carried out by means on the first stage uh, tanks, and second uh, stage for separation, and pressure valve regulation, and pumping equipment. And gas compression, and uh, compression equipment. Uh, allowed to recover a large of the gas to use in offshore facility or send a uh, land station and continue with the treatment process. Uh, in the picture, uh, we can see in general the flow sheet on the, uh, of the process in addition uh, to what has already been described. Uh, the integration of condensate from the compression stage is to the oil stabilization substance and the low pressure uh, pressure gas recir recirculates um, for its recovery. Uh, methodology. In summary, uh, the methodology of the world was first to obtain that base of the system. This one done using a commercial simulation, a later a twin, este, twin model was generated using an artificial neural network. network. Finally, the multi-objective optimization um, problem was addressed considering the two objective, function restriction and search space. Uh, we are going to describe uh, each step of the methodology. Um, the first, modeling and simulation. The flow sheet of the physical model was built in the high seas software using the data, data from table and one and table two. The steady simulation was solved for the base case and the database with the design variables and performance indicator was subsequently generated using the case studies simulator models. Um, Penn Robinson uh, thermodynamic model was selected for the calculation of fluid properties and flash separation. Um, numerical experiments. To review the interaction uh, between the variables uh, the SCARA matrix was built. The most important um, thing that, key, that, um, that we can observe uh, in the graph is that it has the separation pressure uh, of the second stage increase 
the oil increase the oil increase and the compression power decrease. Uh, another point, uh, it is important that the one concludes that the low pressure in the discharge, the charge of the compressor favor the increase um, of the oil uh, flow. This field's conclusion are consistent with the results of the multi-objective uh, optimization. Um, digital twin using A and N. To generate, to generate a digital twin model, the artificial network, neural network algorithm was used. The database is divided into the three, three sets, training, validation, and testing. Uh, the results showed uh, that the objective function obtained are consistent and satisfactory relate the five design variables with the performance indicator. Um, formulation of optimization problem. At this stage, uh, the objective function of the optimization obtained using artificial intelligence techniques, which we discussed previously, we define the study two function uh, were proposed maximizing uh, crude oil provision production and minimizing compression power um, the design variables were selected because in a separation plan uh, the design point can, can be modifi modified uh, in this part of the methodology, the solution space for design variables and constraint was limited. The minimum and maximum pressure was determined according to the typical operating condition of the wells and the maximum operating pressure of the vessel. Uh, the temperature range uh, of the compressor discharge was selected according to the thermal capacity of the head exchanger. Um, on, on the optimization problem defined, we are in a position to solve it. Um, theory and uh, implementation of algorithm. algorithm, algorithm. Uh, theory and implementation of algorithm to solve the multi-objective optimization problem the method of non-dominant classification genetic, genetic algorithm two was used to obtain the Pareto form. It was implemented on MATLAB using the default parameters as indicated in table three. Uh, these parameters are robust enough to provide satisfactory, satisfactory uh, results in all application problems. Um, results and discussion. In this slide, we can see the results obtained from the ANN. And the results of the training and testing of the ANN proposed were satisfactory considering the uh, coefficient, coefficient of the determin determination. The degree of dispersion are around the unit of slope in the minimal and the cover the variability of the output parameter for edge in the training, um, testing, and validation. And this occurs in into the two indicators, and both results and half and distribution um, and normal distribution. This has demonstrated uh, that the digital model generated with the implementation of the ANN is capable to do it successfully uh, replicate the real value of the design variables. And the result obtained from the multi objective uh, optimization are shown in Pareto front. All the points in the Pareto fronts are non dominating 
and they correspond to the optimal solution. Comparing este, the results with the base case, and um, the oil flow obtained increased um, by 6.2 percent. And this increase in the production is important because it contribute, contributes to the daily production of national crude and avoid the burning of gas due to inefficient process. Conclusion, um, the methodology used in this in this study provide irreliable results and the computational tools we applied correctly to solve the problem. The results can be validated in a real system, sandy design variables and easily adjust in the field. Applying this methodology, um, existing oil separation and compression plant can optimize production. And the operation of the equipment with optimal condition results in the best use of non renewable resources with the least environmental impact and economic benefits. Um, th thank you for, for your attention. Um, I have este, the contact emails, uh, Dr. Rashid Tari. Um, Este, any question the presentation? Thank you, Jose Hugo. Manuel, are you here? Uh, okay. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, any question for the speaker? Uh, well, I, I have uh, a question. Jose, I have a question. Uh, yes, I am here. Uh, Rasif, the corresponding author. I will be here to respond on the behalf of Jose. You may go on with your question. Okay, uh, my, my question is uh, the methodology and the uh, and the obtained results are applicable for a specific configuration of the process or it can be applied for any other uh, system configuration. Thank you so much for your question. In fact, it is a very interesting question in which uh, I would like to mention that this methodology can be adoptable to any type of systems, not the specific one that uh, Jose has mentioned in his presentation, but we can apply it to other areas. For example, we can go on biochemical systems, thermal systems, other energy systems, or for a variety of applications, which can be desalination or in energy and buildings, uh, or many others that we can imagine because uh, the methodology presented in this article is actually a tool for the alternative modeling of any type of systems, any type of data. And especially we, ha we have been using artificial neural network. So you ca we can use that for any type of data modeling. And then optimization is the type of uh, area which can be applied to a variety of, of areas and variety of fields from business administration to engineering areas. So yes, it can be adoptable to a variety of areas. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have one question. Um, because uh, you are analyzing, you are trying to, to get the, the, the best uh, uh, operating condition of a separation plant of, of oil and gas separation plant. So, how can you manage the the the, the real time situation uh, uh, in in some specific? Because you are trying to get some optimal conditions, but uh, my my question is is uh, how is in 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 real time the plant 
the proportion of oil and gas, and how can you manage uh, many variables? Uh, thank you so much. This is all. This is also a very interesting question. Uh, for example, in a processing plant, like, like the one mentioned, in, you can control characteristic characteristics of the plant. For example, the one variables that for sales uh, yeah. managing, especially the operational pressures and temperatures. So these one could be playable. These could, could these one could be controllable. That's why we have selected them as the design variables. And there can be certain other variables that are generally not controllable. So we have avoided them for the optimization processes because these comes up from the physical barriers of the of the plant. Uh, so one option that we are looking here for the future studies is to conduct some sorts of optimization scenarios in which we can consider a set of variables to be optimized for a set of uh, performance indicators. This could give us a more broad perspective for the current problem problem that we are experiencing here. OK, I understand. You start from some state state uh, operation condition and your optimization is. Uh, uh, is computed. To, to improve the operating conditions. Exactly, you have identified it correctly. Yes, we are specifically uh, trying to identify the most optimal operational conditions, which includes the pressure and the temperature of certain points of that overall processing plant. Mm -hmm. and, and how much time uh, takes the optimization, the computation, because uh, you have a very complex uh, plant. Yes, uh, OK, this is also a very interesting question because uh, in this case, uh, we have certain steps in our methodology. For example, in the first step, we are modeling the physical process on a software called Aspen. So this one can take time, but what we are trying to do for the optimization is we are in intending to generate a digital twin model using the artificial yes. neural network. So in that case, the usage of the digital twin model using the artificial neural network gives us a direct relationship between the input variables and the output variables uh, because we are working under the operational range of certain design variables through our data that we have generated from the Aspen. So in that case, we are completely um, relying on the computational performance of the digital twin model. And it is since it is a direct relationship between the input and the output variables. So in that case, uh, over optimization time is in seconds. So that is one of the benefits of using the digital twin models that if we are using them within a certain range of the data model, then we can obtain um, optimization results in a very less computational power. OK, thank you very much. It's, it seems to be very interesting. Thank you. Thank, thank you for your question. OK, uh, with this presentation, concludes the mechanical engineering session. Uh, thank you very much for your attendance. And I don't know if the conference chair uh, has any announcement. Nothing, thank you very much. Have a good afternoon and see you tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. See you. Thank you for everyone.